Hey, it's Mark Ferguson with Investor and More, and we're back with another real estate video. And today we're talking about the housing market. I'm going to show you what the trends look like for the last year and actually a number of years, thanks to the Realtor.com housing report, which has a ton of great information about interest rates and what those are doing, what they might do, and how that might impact the housing market. And then we'll talk about inflation a little bit too, because that might impact interest rates. And we'll see how this all jumbles together. Of course, nobody knows for sure what's going to happen. Uh, we're all kind of guesstimating because we don't know for sure what interest rates will do or housing will do or the economy will do. But we can always talk about what we see in the trends and charts and give our best estimate of what might happen in the future. All right. So for those of you who don't know me, I mean, I've been an agent broker since 2020. No, just, 2022, 2002, a little while, which seems crazy. And I've been um, investing in rentals since 2010 and flips since about 2003. So I've been around a long time and seen a lot of different housing markets. This is kind of a very frustrating one for a lot of people, whether you're in the industry, trying to buy houses, trying to sell houses. Frustrating is a really good word for this market because there's not many houses for sale. There's not really any good deals if you're trying to buy. There's some, but not that many. It's kind of hard to sell houses because interest rates are so high. And it's hard to refinance properties too. Now, if you're in the industry as an agent, lender, title company, there are very few transactions, so it's hard for you to make money as well. So it's really been tough. And most of that stems from interest rates. And we'll talk about interest rates in here in just a little bit. But first, I wanna go through the realtor.com charts and kind of show you what they tell us because they have some amazing data and it's compiled year over year. And we'll show you why that's important. I'll even show you some of my local data here too in Colorado. But basically, the bullet points they have here, we'll show you the, the charts here soon. The number of homes actively for sale was notably higher compared to last year, growing by 8%. So there's actually been an increase in inventory, which should help the housing market some. Um, the total number of unsold homes, including homes that are under contract, increased by 6.5%. Again, a little more inventory. Home sellers were slightly more active this January with 2.8% more newly listed homes. So more homes coming on the market and the median price of homes for sale this January remained relatively stable compared to the same time last year, growing by 1.4%. So year over year, prices are up again, although just a tiny bit. Uh, homes spent 69 days in the market, which is for a shorter than last year and more than two weeks shorter than before COVID. So that's something too to consider is there's so many um, channels out there and news media outlets trying to sell headlines and drama and fear mongering. And a lot of their data is from the last two years. Well, COVID and chain, you know, supply chains, interest rates messed up everything, right? <laughs> the charts and graphs since COVID hit are just crazy. And for comparing today to those charts, it's really hard to see what's going on. Now, if we go before COVID, that was more of a normal real estate market. We had more normal supply chains, more normal supply and demand. And that gives us a better idea of what's happening today versus the craziness of like 2021, 2022, when things just went absolutely bonkers. So I like to compare things to before COVID, which Realtor.com does really well to get a full picture of what is happening. And it's also really easy to show prices up or down depending on what data you choose, especially for specific markets, which a lot of other channels do too. They're like, oh, prices are down 15% in this zip code in Florida, um, crash coming. Well, if they would have chosen the month before, prices might've been up 10%. Like it's literally that um, crazy on some of these local markets, how different prices fluctuate. And we'll show you that in my market here in a little bit. All right, so the number of homes for sale improves, but still short of pre-pandemic levels. So this is really cool. You have 2017, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24 now, which seems crazy, but yes, we're in 2024. And usually, um, depending on the chart, for active listing count, the older, the, the farther away the year was, the higher this number is gonna be. And it just shows how many more listings there were before COVID um, compared to now. So kind of 2019, 2017 is blue, 2018 is orange. That's those three lines up here. Show you how many active listings there were. And you can see there's very clear seasonality with listings decreasing, increasing, and that happens with price too, which is why it's really important to use year over year numbers instead of 
three month numbers because seasonality can really make those jumps go up and down as well. 2020 was pretty similar to these, but lower, and then it dropped like a rock. Uh, just crazy what happened there, and then we've been at really low for active listings. You can see we're slightly higher than last year, which is pink, but still way below pre-COVID years. And these pre-COVID years were way below the years before them, and way, way below the housing crash numbers. So for example, this says there's about you know 1.15 million houses for sale in 2017, went up to 1.3 million in the fall. In 2006, there were five to six million homes for sale in the country. Five times how many houses were for sale. And that is using the highest number we can in the last six years right? So it's crazy how different things are now compared to pre-crash. So when people say it's happening all over again, crash is coming. When you look at inventory, it's so hard to see anything like that happening just because there's so few houses for sale. And yes, interest rates are high, but remember in two, uh, 1982, there were 18%. And um, wages didn't make up for that. House prices didn't make up for that. It was more expensive to buy a house in 1982 when you factor all of that in than now, even with the high rates we have now. And prices didn't drop in the 80s. They kept going up. So that's another kind of misconception is that people assume because interest rates are high, prices are going to come down. And historically, that hasn't happened. In fact, there's multiple studies that say that doesn't happen as well um, because of what we we're seeing here. Low inventory, people aren't selling and it just causes a lot of stagnation in the market, um, not crashes. All right, total listing count. Again, here's our little brown dot, which is 2024, right in between 2021, 2023, 2022 was down here. So again, way below normal up here and s still not even past 2021 as far as um, listing count. Uh, pending listing count, that's a properties under contract. Um, again, right in between 2020 and 2023, not quite as low as there. Um, 2017, oddly, had a really low number. Oh, wait, 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 wait. No, I'm reading it wrong. Sorry. 2021's up here. 2022's here. 2023. So there's a lot more houses for sale or, or under contract, sorry, in 2022, 2023. Just a crazy market everybody wanted to buy, where now we're getting back to more normal. In 2020, you saw this crazy stuff going on here. 2023 was pretty normal um, for all these years, and we're right in line there again with this um, kind of historic normal for houses going under contract and selling. We're not even below what it was in the normal market. So while there's way fewer sales now happening in the last few years, it's not like it's low compared to what normal is. It's actually higher than some of those years. All right, newly listed homes. Homes that are coming on the market barely barely above 2024 and look at 2024 it was record low almost all year long 2022 had a few uh, months at the end of the year that were lower and then 2022 jumped up but we're still seeing almost new no new houses being listed and this is because people don't want to sell their house that has a two, three, four percent interest rate and go buy another house that has seven, eight percent interest rate. It just doesn't make sense for most people, so they're not selling. I actually know some people who are buying a house, and yes, they're getting, I don't know what their rate is, um, I'm not representing them or anything like that, but they're buying a new house, they have a very nice older house, and they're not selling it. They're keeping it as a rental because their interest rate is so low. So not only are they buying a new house, um, they're not putting their house on the market. So the low interest rates have caused them where they might've sold it before to not sell it, to hang on to it. And that's what you see over and over again. Uh, days on market, um, slightly lower than 2023. So 2023 was a little bit higher as you can see than 2022, which was yellow, 2021, which was green. We're back down again. So you can see 2023, kind of dipped below 2022 and days on market is actually shrinking a little bit which means houses are selling a little quicker than they have been definitely knowing indications of a crash and we'll talk about this here soon if interest rates drop we could be in for some crazy markets again if they drop significantly now i don't know if that will happen we don't have a crystal ball we don't know for sure but if they do drop a lot it could be a crazy market if they drop a little 
it could definitely make it a, a seller's market again. Uh, median listing price up again, barely. As you can see, here's this little dot right here. Here's 2023, here's 2022, here's 2021. <laughs> so you can see it's pretty steady. 2017 is blue, 2018 is orange, um, 2019 red, um, blue was 2020, and then we started to kind of be abnormal a little bit where we saw this prices start to rise higher than they had in just a tiny bit of drop. Then we had bigger rise here in 21 and it kind of stayed. You didn't have a little bit of drop at the end of the year, you usually see, but not a big one. 2022, I saw a huge, massive increase in prices hit that peak. Then we saw a little bigger drop, partially because we saw such a huge peak right there. And then 2023 was very close to mirroring 2022 at the end of the year. Again, just slightly higher. So we've kind of flattened out for sure on pricing, but that could change if interest rates drop significantly. Again, we don't know that will happen. There's no crystal ball, but it could. And I don't see any situation where prices drop significantly. Um, you know, we could see the seasonal drops. You know, 2020 had this weird drop here in the middle, actually more of just like a flattening out because of, you know, COVID. But I don't see anything going too crazy against these curves. And price reduced share, again, we heard so much of that from the fear mongers and, and crash predictors um, about how, oh, price shares are going up. There's so many people cutting their prices and they're talking about that in 2022. And so here, we'll go to blue. Here's blue, 2020. And you saw a big decrease once COVID hit and a decrease overall. And that turned into 2021, very low, way below normal price cuts. Um, at the end of in fall, when it's tougher to sell homes, it's almost always toughest to sell homes in fall. Um, you saw the price cuts increase, then decrease, which almost always happens, as you can see in all these other charts. Then we got to 2022, which is yellow, and this is where rates jumped up. And you saw this big increase in price cuts, but it really only got back to normal. It didn't go above um, 2018, maybe just a little bit at the end, but it was pretty in line with all the rest of them. And then 2023, we actually saw a decrease again in price cuts, uh, less than normal. And again, 2024, here we are, and we're below 2023 and below 2019. So the, this idea that price cuts are just everywhere and going crazy does not show up in the data. There's more price cuts than 2021 in the first part of 2022 and 2020, yes. But again, those are crazy years, but we're right in line with what was happening before that. So that's all the Realtor.com data. Now I want to show you some of my local data here. This is Greeley, Colorado. And what we're looking at right now is 2019 to right now, uh, median sales price. So this is where I want to show you how you can get tricked into um, price, like decreases and increases. So we're around 300,000, kind of crept up, kind of kept up, huge increase in 2021. Again, um, and a lot of people say, oh, the market's crashing because we're down from our peak. This was such a crazy peak. And honestly, I don't remember properties. It didn't seem like prices were that high here. Maybe the numbers show that, but it didn't feel like they're that high. And then yes, we saw some drops and then we've really leveled out as you can see. So how can people be tricked? Well. Let's say we took November year over year pricing and said, okay, November 2023 median price was 380,000. You can see these massive swings from 425 to 380. And that's because when you do zip codes or you do specific markets, there's not as many houses selling. And so if one month one really expensive house sells or a couple really expensive houses sell, it'll bump up that median price. If another month, not that many expensive houses sell or maybe a couple really cheap houses sell, it can really bump down the price. So it's tricky when you just use one month in comparison. And I'll show you why. 380,000 was in November, 2023. Well, we go back to November of 2024, 405,250. So, whoops. If we take that, that's a 25,000 difference in price. We'll divide that by the 405,250. Prices drop 6% year over year. Right? You can hear those headlines. You see those headlines all over the place. Prices dropped. Well, what if we would have taken December? Okay, let's do December. 
one month difference. 423, 373, minus December of 2022, 405, 970. We had an increase of 17,000. So we divide that by 405,970. Prices went up 4%. <laughs> so depending on if you decide to choose data from November or December, either prices went down 6% or they went up 4%. And you very rarely hear, oh, prices went up 4%. You always hear the prices went down because that's what gets the headlines, that's what gets the attention. They're literally YouTube channels that make their living from talking about housing crashes and they push all the data they can to push those housing crash talking points, we'll say. Um, so yeah, you can see we are down from the peak. We are definitely down from that peak. But if you're anywhere around that peak, a little bit before, a little bit after, we could be up or down from those numbers. So has the market stabilized? Yes, from this craziness for sure is stabilized. Is it crashing? No, it's not crashing. Will it crash? I don't think so. I don't know for sure. Will it do this again and jump up? Probably not unless interest rates really drop, but I doubt that will happen so fast. We're probably gonna see stable market, maybe slight rise, maybe slight decline, nothing too crazy. That's my best guess. Now, what else should we look at? Interest rates. This is a frustrating point for me. Uh, I talk about inflation and different things a lot on this channel. 6.8%, which is actually lower than it has been. So um, this is Nerd Wallet. Oh, I want to, I don't know if they'll let me expand this chart back farther. Anyway, rates were eight in November, October, way higher than this. Um, actually, you know, you can see right here, 6.9. Yeah, they were up here. The, the red is the five-year arm, and the five-year arm is higher than the 30-year fixed because I think lenders anticipate rates going down eventually. This is the 30-year fixed. This is the 15-year fixed. And so for a second there, a couple of weeks ago, it was down almost to six. I know this says 6.359, but I have a, a picture on my social media. I took a screenshot of it when it, it was like 6.083 or something that day. And then it bumped back up by the end of the day. So they dropped a ton. Then there's some economic data that came in. They went back up and they've been climbing. Now they're dropping a little bit again. So it's just frustrating for me because this is so much higher than it was before and it's caused our market to stagnate. Now, if it was the early 2000s, even the 90s, the mid 2000s, this really isn't that high of a rate because normally we saw rates from five to 6% in the 2000s. Um, in the 1990s, you saw rates start at 10 and slowly drop down to like seven or eight. They weren't crazy low. So this would actually have been a, a fantastic rate in the 90s, would have been an amazing rate in the 80s where rates ranged from basically like 10 to 18%. Um, so, the, the big problem here is we went from two to seven or eight in like two months, right? It was crazy. The Fed decided to raise interest rates the fastest they'd ever raised them in the history of the Fed. Um, so it brought this shock. It stopped people from selling, from buying, and it just created a lot of problems in the entire industry. Now, here's where I get on my soapbox and we go look at inflation numbers. So why... Um, does the Fed raise its interest rates? Well, it wants to try and stop inflation. I disagree with a lot of the reasoning behind this. I won't go into this in this video too much. Basically, they say if we raise interest rates, it will kill demand and prices will stop going up. Now, I own a store. I own other businesses. If I sell less goods, if you kill my demand, I have to raise my prices, right? I don't lower my prices. I raise them because I'm selling to fewer customers. The Fed doesn't seem to agree with me on that. The other thing that raising interest rates does is it makes financing more expensive. Makes it more expensive to buy homes, as we've seen. Makes it more expensive to build homes. Makes it more expensive for companies that do logging or that build appliances or that create carpet. All of those become more expensive because even if that company making carpet doesn't use financing, they probably use another company or have a supplier that does use financing. If their costs go up, the next company's costs go up. If their costs go up, their prices go up. So inherently, high interest rates make inflation go higher. And I know I've talked about this a lot and a lot of people disagree with me, but it's clear as day to me. And even with that, inflation isn't that high. So <laughs> here's um, trading economics, month over month inflation. A lot of people do the year over year stuff. 
<laughs> well, you could have 11 months of low inflation and one month of horrible inflation 11 months ago, and it'll look like the inflation rate is high. But if you look at the year month over month, you can see exactly when inflation calmed down. And that's something else I want to talk about too. A lot of people think if inflation decreases or stops, prices are going to drop. That's not what happens. Inflation is the rate of increase of prices. So if inflation is back to normal, prices still go up. They don't just they don't go up as high. So with inflation down, it doesn't mean we're seeing a drop. It just means things are stabilizing, becoming more normal. Deflation is when prices drop. That's very rare. We had it after COVID. You can see right here, um, a little bit right here in 2015 for some reason, not sure why. But it's very, very rare, almost never happens. And you can see historically, inflation's up and down every month. And then we had COVID, and then inflation started to go up a little bit, and then boom, inflation went up a lot. Why did inflation go up? My opinion, a bunch of money was dumped into the economy. Lots of people had money, they could buy lots of stuff, prices go up. Also, supply chain issues. It was so hard to get stuff, right? It was so hard to get appliances, so hard to get windows, so hard to get lumber, so hard to get all the things that we needed that companies could charge more for them and they had to pay more in shipping, the, the boat docks were backed up, shipping times increased, costs to do everything skyrocketed. And because the timing of everything skyrocketed, the cost skyrocketed, prices went up. Now, this is June of 2022, you can see the peak. July, it dropped like a rock. And since then, it's been very up and down, but right around two to 3%, which is what they say their target is. Why interest rates are still so high, I don't know. I don't know why the Fed does that. Jerome Powell has said many different things over the years. In 2020, he said inflation was too low and they needed to get inflation higher. Then in the, this range here, he said inflation was transitionary. Um, it was just supply chain issues. He didn't need to do anything. It would solve itself. And then the end of 2021, sorry, 2022, they freaked out. They raised rates and um, went bonkers with rates, even though they said it could take two years, one to two years to see the effect of raising interest rates. And ironically, I don't have the chart with me right now. I'm sorry. The majority of interest rate raises came after June 2022. So you might say, oh, interest rates fixed the problem. You're, you're full of whatever. Well, the majority of interest rates happened July, August, September, the end of 2022. Inflation was already down. Inflation had already kind of corrected itself, just like Jerome Powell um, predicted it would, with supply chain issues being fixed. He was right in the beginning, but he didn't stick to his guns. I don't know if it was pressure or he wanted to be in the limelight. I don't know what it was, but he completely switched course, completely changed his talking points and raised rates as high as possible. And even though inflation was already down. So what's my point with this? My point is, in my opinion, theoretically, logically, interest rates should already be lower than they are. We don't need them as high as they are. Inflation has been in check for almost a year now. However, actually over a year, because this was June. Yeah, well over a year. Powell, the Fed, does not feel the same as me. So for me to say, oh, rates are definitely going to come down, I have no confidence in that because I think they should have already been down and they're not. And because of that, I don't know what the federal government's going to do. I doubt they'll raise them anymore. A lot of people speculate they will lower them, but we don't know if they will or not. Um, so... We hope, I guess, that they come down a little bit, make the market more stable. If, the, if they come down too much, it might cause a virus frenzy. If by chance they don't drop them at all or they raise them like crazy people, they'll make it even more stagnant and cause even more problems. So we'll see. One final thing I wanna leave on uh, with this video is the higher rates make housing more expensive in the long term. Even, let's say you raise rates to 20% and it caused a drop, everyone freaked out, and prices dropped a little bit for like a year or so. Builders are gonna stop building with those high rates. They've already slowed down their building now with high rates, and that's gonna mean less inventory in the future. Less inventory in the future means a housing shortage, means prices keep going up. If rates were lower, that means more building now. It means even if prices do jump now, more inventory in the future and if we bite that bullet now 
and lower interest rates, even slowly, and allow more building and the builders to catch up to housing market demand, it will make housing more stable, more inventory in the future, and less crazy. So it's not all about immediate results with interest rates. We need to be thinking about the future and building and housing inventory as well. All right, there's my housing market update. I haven't done one of these for a little while, so let me know what you think. If you think I'm crazy, hey, let me know. And uh, I might not agree with you. I might just have a discussion, but we'll be civil, I promise. (laughs) And happy to hear other people's opinions. And let me know what you're seeing in your market as well. All right, take care. We'll be back with many more other videos on my rentals, flips, commercial properties, laundromats, all that stuff coming up soon.